Hey guys, TGKS Productions. So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to capture the latest legendary bounty that was added into RDR Online, Cecil C. Tucker. Um, this is going to be, or the basically the footage you're going to be seeing is me going over difficulty 5. Obviously, I went through all the other four difficulties. I'm also, at the end of the video, going to be going over how much I made off of all five difficulties. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stick around. But real quick, we're going to basically read over the bounty poster, and then I'm going to let you guys see the cutscene before we sort of get into specifics. So here's the bounty poster. Basically, we'll be paid to whoever it delivers to authorities, Cecil C. Tucker, dead or alive, known arsonist and murder of women and children while in their beds. Here's the only known picture of Cecil T. Tuck Tucker, 20 years of age, armed and has been known to shoot to evade capture. Bounty will be paid in cash upon capture or kill. So here comes the cutscene. And obviously after that, we'll get into more specifics on how to capture this bounty. This little son of a bitch, Cecil Tucker. <laughs> His crime was cowardly, killing good folks in their sleep. And he's been a coward ever since. Running off and hiding out. But I'll tell you what, if your crimes are heinous enough, they're gonna catch up with you. I hear he went to the Lemoyne Raiders over near Fort Brennan, hoping they'd protect him. And most probably they will. <laughs> up to a point. They fancy themselves gorillas this bunch. What do you want? So I'd come ready for underhand tactics of some sort. Yeah. Alright, straight off the bat here you're gonna see me looking at my weapons, looking at my tonics. I personally recommend taking in a, a a repeater, a rifle, as well as a decent sidearm. Like I said, I personally like the volcanic pistol just because it's pretty accurate and deals a lot of damage. You'll see me messing with my tonics here too. Make sure you have your tonics set up in the uh, items list of your uh, weapon wheel, just so you can quickly get to them. Basically, in case you need them, make sure you have you know health tonic, pot potent you know miracle tonic, things like that, snake oil. You're gonna see me looking also at the map here. So this is the base basically that where these enemies are, and basically we're gonna be the for the entirety of the really the bounty mission. You'll see me sort of going over these enemies. You'll see there's two guys that are walking around the base, and there's basically a guy on either side of the entrance, or on both, on each entrance on each side of the base. Um, the reason why I'm going over this, I'm, I just want to want to explain why I really don't recommend going in stealth. Here. You'll see I pretty much just go in loud and just start taking out the targets pretty much immediately. I just recommend you have decent cover, but it's very hard to determine what direction those enemies are going to be moving because number one you got those guys constantly patrolling around the base you have the guys going in and out of each entrance and then even the guys in the base will sort of rotate around the watchtowers and whatnot so it's very difficult to try to figure out which enemies you want to take out so that's sort of why I don't advocate really taking stealth that seriously um, you, you, if you want to try you can take out maybe a couple but like I said don't worry about it that much what's nice here is these enemies are actually on the map where typically um, on a, on a difficulty 5 bounty and it will actually later they will not the other enemies that come in later which we'll get into that they will not be on the map their icons won't be but these enemies are which is nice you only have to take about eight take out about eight enemies here um, when I paused the map earlier if you looked and counted there's only about eight on the map basically this smart thing here is just be careful don't rush obviously just take your time if you want to take a tonic you know just to sort of get yourself set up like I said I recommend having like a repeater and a rifle that's sort of gonna benefit you later on as you're gonna see like I said, just take out these enemies, and really, that you know, th this is probably the <laughs> the easiest part of this whole bounty. It's gonna get a lot harder after this. So, um, like I said, take out these enemies, pretty straightforward, and then we'll get into the next part. All right, so see, once you basically take out these first group of enemies or Lemoyne raiders at Fort Fort Brennan. What you want to do is, you're going to see basically right here, and I'm going to show you on the map here in a second, but you'll see me sort of crawl up this little uh, pathway or, or wooden board basically leading up to this tower, and you want to get in the utmost or the highest point in this one tower. Like I said, I'm about to pause my map here just to kind of give you an idea of where to find this in the fort, sort of on that, um, if you're looking directly at it, it's on the right side, depending on what side, it would be right or left, but another easy way to, to sort of figure out what side I'm on or the, the tower that I'm in is 
if you look on the on the side of the of the fort that has the maxim gun on it it's going to be the, basically the tower to the left of that maxim gun and again use the map as well when i pause it you can also use that to sort of figure out where you want to be at but basically you just want to stay in this tower for the entirety of the bounty um, or at least for, for yeah pretty much until basically eventually Cecil C. Tucker is going to end up showing up um, like I said one thing is in sort of in the beginning that I, I wanted to mention but I didn't but right here sort of you'll see a lot of explosives that are going to be laid out here Do, this is the time when you want to shoot them try to avoid shooting them in the very beginning obviously because you're going to have a ton of enemies coming in and um, you, obviously you want to make sure that you know those explosives can really help you take out a bunch of enemies now you see here I'm sort of turning around every now and then uh, for whatever reason on difficulty 4 I actually had two guys rush me it's the only difficulty I had it had somebody rush me up in this tower all the other difficulties I had nobody rush me so I would just be aware of that ladder sort of just maybe turn around and check every now and then you'll see me periodically turn around and check just to ensure no one's coming up obviously if someone does you know that could really be detrimental considering you only have one life and if they're that close and you're not really paying attention you're likely to get killed pretty quickly but for the most part like i said you're just taking out these waves of enemies that are just going to be coming in and you just want to be in this tower and you you have i mean this tower is probably the best position you obviously don't want to be on the ground trying to do this you would likely not survive especially not knowing where the enemy flips are um, you have a lot of cover. This tower is pretty closed in besides the windows. Basically, you just want to move from window to window and take out the enemies. And eventually, after you take out so many enemies, Cecil C. Tucker will show up. And it'll, it'll show up with a number of enemies, and you're also going to have to take those enemies out as well. But until then, like I said, just move from window to window. Um, what I, don't, I definitely don't recommend is, is using the Maxim gun. Um, you're, you're way too exposed to do that, unless maybe you're doing this with a posse. Um, maybe you could give it a shot, but like I said, if you're going solo or even maybe like a duo in a sense, I would not recommend trying to use that max gun. There's a lot of enemies, you were very exposed, even if you were to use a tonic, you will likely end up getting killed in the long run. There, there is a ton of enemies you have to take out here. Um, this tower really is the safer race of really being able to pass this bounty in the long run. And really, the only spot, besides the windows, there is sort of one spot, the side that I'm on right now, there is a sort of a little bit of an opening on the bottom, but other than that, it's pretty closed in. So like I said, this is really the best spot you can, at least that I found, I've seen some other videos that have done this bounty, they've used the same spot. So this is really the spot you want to definitely go up against. I did not fail this bounty a single time, and I used this spot um, from difficulty 2 to 5, so you I can definitely recommend this spot is very good and you definitely want to use this. So as you'll see here, as I stated, after you take out basically a number of these Lemoyne Raiders or enemies, you'll see on the mini-map here, Sea Soul, Sea Tucker will eventually show up. He's going to be traveling in a wagon. He's going to be basically traveling to Fort Brennan. What's really nice about this bounty is he will not run away. He actually comes to you, so that's really nice. You don't have to worry about you don't have to basically leave this position is what I'm trying to get at. Just stay up here. You know, keep taking out the enemies. Like I said, as soon as he comes in, don't try to rush down and go get him immediately. There's still going to be a ton of enemies out there. Um, I don't know how much of this I'm going to show, but because I, I again, like I, I, I spent a lot of time up in this tower, but <laughs> if I show it or not, you'll eventually see like there's so many guys hitting the tower. It's crazy. I mean, I'm hearing bullets hitting everywhere it's really, you just, there's so many guys shooting at the tower so obviously you don't want to be going down there uh, right away you still want to keep sort of hitting the numbers of these enemies and then eventually you will go down and get them so like i said for the majority just stay up here once you feel a little bit more confident like i said i recommend taking a tonic moving down take out the, the remaining you know few enemies that are basically on the ground and then you can move in on sea cell tucker another note i want to say here is um when you are shooting in the tower Make sure, obviously, he, Cecil Tucker is going to be around a lot of these Lemoyne Raiders when he ends up coming to Fort Brennan. You want to be careful you don't ac accidentally shoot him. Obviously, if you're locking on these enemies, you can accidentally lock on him. Um, one sort of key thing here that is sort of easy to, to point him out is he sort of has this blue shirt or blue vest on that none of the Lemoyne Raiders do have. So do watch out for that. Like I said, he's pretty easy to spot. So obviously, just make sure you're not you know, locking on to somebody with a blue shirt or blue vest. He's going to be the only person with, you know, that sort of that blue shirt or blue vest on. Um, I believe here he, he's sort of a little bit further back if you sort of looked at, I looked through my scope there real quick. But um, like I said, 
just make sure you're careful about who you're killing. You know what I mean? That he's, he's, he's pretty easy to, like I said, point out, so you shouldn't have really a problem with that. But, um, yeah, once you pretty much, like I said, take the remaining these, the remainder of these enemies out, uh, you just want to go down. Uh, I recommend having the reinforced lasso, tackle them, hog tie them, and deliver them to the nearest jail. Now one more thing I want to quickly go over before you see me deliver him and I go over basically the totals that I received for all five difficulties. Personally, I did not have any pursuers on any of my difficulties, one through five. I've watched some other videos, apparently there are pursuers and apparently they even set up roadblocks. I have not encountered any pursuers which I find quite interesting, the fact that other people did and I didn't. Typically. For the most part, going through all five difficulties, everybody usually ends up getting the same variation at least once. I did not get pursued a single time. So I had no problem taking them to Ansberg. Um, although if you do get if you do end up having pursuers, I've heard some people end up taking them to Sand Me instead because there's apparently less chasing you if you, you take a different route. Because obviously the game probably knows you're gonna likely go to Ansberg, so there's gonna be more enemies. Like I said, I've had no problem taking them to Ansberg. Um, I did not have any pursuers out of all five difficulties, so that sort of depends. Um, in the case of sort of preparing for that, I would recommend having a bounty wagon. I actually did use a bounty wagon on the other four difficulties. I forgot to actually use it on five, but I did not have any pursuers. So I do recommend having a bounty wagon just in case you do happen to get the you know pursuers that come after you. But in any case, I'm going to deliver them here, and then I'm going to go over the totals that I received for all the difficulties. I'll confess, I'm sad to see them still alive, but well done anyway. Here's what you do. Alright, so if we added the totals that we got for going through all five difficulties of this legendary bounty, we get a total cash of $456.42, total amount of gold of 1.84 gold bars, we get a total amount of player XP of 4,564 XP, and we got a total roll XP of 5,704. Not too bad. It's actually interesting. I wanted to go back and compare it to last week's, and I'm going to show you up on the screen so the calculations that I got. Um, if we could look at the cash from last week's Legendary Bounty and this week's, got a little bit more cash last week, around $60, $70 more. Got around the same, we got the same amount of gold for the past two weeks. And then for player XP, we actually got about 800 more last week. And then even roll XP, we got almost 1,000 more last week. So last week's Legendary Bounty seems to be a little bit more lucrative. Um, still within range, I would say. You're still getting a decent amount this week by all means. Um, I would still recommend doing these legendary bounties. They're still, you know, very lucrative. If you're grinding the other roles, like the trader role or the collector role, I would definitely recommend. You know, if you're going to do, a, if you're trying to basically utilize all three roles, definitely do one of these legendary bounties. You're going to be making more than pretty much doing any other bounty mission, and not only you're going to be making more, but 
you can only do these every only every 40 minutes or, or one hour or whatever one day is an RDR online anyway so I definitely recommend doing that but um, anyways guys hope you enjoy this video video I hope you found it beneficial um, I hope you will find great success if you decide to do this uh, the legendary bounty to still see Tucker but in any case guys I appreciate you watching take care and have a great day